So how do you determine if your Wi-Fi signal is any good on your M4 Mac? And how do you improve it? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one for you today. Now stay tuned to the whole video and you can post if you've learned something, I guarantee you will in this video. So maybe you won't, but we'll see. Number one, I've done a whole bunch of videos over the last couple months on the M4 Mac Mini sitting over there and I love the thing, but that as well as any M4 Mac or any M3 Mac as well. Obviously, you can connect SSDs to those things, you know, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5. I've done a whole bunch of videos in connecting hubs and stuff like that, including hubs like this here. And what we've learned, and I'll actually put the video up right here right now, in this video, we kind of learned that anything you connect to the Mac Mini or any Mac, again, for that matter, can cause interference and can cause noise in your room that will actually affect your Wi-Fi speeds, all right? So in this video specifically today, what I want to show you is how to check to see if your Wi-Fi connection is optimal. It's all built into, you know, Mac OS. I'm going to show you that really quickly. And then you can go ahead and move and introduce things into it and see how it affects your Wi-Fi in real time. It's actually pretty cool. So sit back and relax, and we're going to learn something today. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started with this. First of all, I'm going to show you a screen that's kind of hidden behind some stuff, but it gives you a lot of good information about your Wi-Fi, and then we're going to talk about exactly what everything is. So if you take a look at my screen over here, here's my cursor. This little Wi-Fi symbol up here, you can click on that. It's going to give you, you know, what, what Wi-Fi connection you're connecting to. But really what you want to do is you want to hold down the option key in your keyboard, and then you want to click on it up here, and it's going to bring up a screen with a whole bunch of different information that should look like this. Okay, so this is the screen that pops up right here. Now, don't worry, I blocked out some stuff here because this is like my IP address and stuff. You don't need to know that. Anyways, you get the idea. But down here are the information that we're going to be looking for. Right in here is what you should see here. This is all basically behind if you hold down the option key and click the little Wi-Fi symbol. But it's really, you know, first of all, the channel right here. You can tell if, what channel you're on and also if you're on the 5 gigahertz or like a 2.4 gigahertz network. It'll tell you right there. That's kind of important, but that's not what we're going to dwell on today. I want to talk about these two values right here. And these are super interesting on what you can do here. So here's the baseline Mac Mini lying flat. Again, I'll show you another picture. You can see my desk. It's really clean over there. I just put the Mac Mini down out of the box. I have nothing next to it. No SSDs, no external drives. It's just basically by itself, right? So this is what I'm using the baseline for. And I get an RSS value here of negative 63 and a noise value of negative 92. So what does this mean? So let's get into the first one, RSSI, and then we'll go through the other one and then give you the last chart. And then we're going to go through a whole bunch of other things here right after that, showing you as I introduce things into the system here, like SSD drives and external drives and things like this little hub here, how it really affects these numbers, and then how you can actually tell if your Wi-Fi is actually really good or really bad. Okay, that first number is called RSSI, and that basically means Receive Signal Strength Indication. It's a measurement of the power level of a received radio or Wi-Fi signal. It essentially indicates how strong the signal is that a receiver is getting from the transmitter. RSSI is often displayed in a negative you know, decibel milliwatts values with the higher negative numbers indicating a weaker signal. So don't worry about so much all this technical stuff. It basically means that the signal coming from the router to your computer, what is happening there? Is the signal strong or is it weak? Obviously, the number like this will change if you introduce things like shutting a door, opening a door, you know, that, that line of, it's not, it could be line of sight, but it's a signal coming through the walls, you know, the, the type of walls. It's going to affect this number. And so if we look back over here really quickly, let me go ahead and shut that down. We can see it's a negative 63 on my base, this is the baseline, with it just sitting flat, negative 63. So what does that number mean? Now here's the chart that tells you what that means. Now just keep in mind that these numbers, if you look, if you look this up, the RSSI chart basically, it's going to give you some different values from you know case to case because it's not really set in stone. These are just kind of perceived numbers, but this should give you a good idea. So I had a negative 63, which means obviously as you go higher here, it's going to be worse. So I'm down this way. So I'm an excellent connection there. That means strong signal with maximum speeds. That's what I want, all right? But as obviously if, if you go down here, if you had like a negative 75 or negative 85, you might get into like a poor performance issue. So look at this chart. You can save this. We'll come back to it many times here. So hold on one second. So the next value here is going to be the noise. See it right here? It's a negative 92. Now that value that you see is basically noise or interference that you're, you're causing around your computer there. So as I add more things to it, like SSD drives or hubs and everything else, that noise level is going to get worse because it's causing more noise, more interference, right? Right now though, it's the base. There's nothing around there really except maybe a mouse and stuff. So I have a negative two noise rating here. And uh, let's see what that means on the chart also. 
Okay, the first chart here, you can see that this is just a really basic one, but you can see that if it's like a negative 100, that means you have a better noise level. And if you go to negative one, it's a worse noise level. So what that basically means is you have no noise over here, you have a ton of noise over here. So you want a high negative number here, you can see it. Let me just show you a chart that makes more sense. All right, this chart will make a little bit more sense here. Wi-Fi noise, more negative is better. So again, just like we said, mine was negative 91 or 92. You can see mine's excellent. So I have very little background interference. But as you introduce more things, you're gonna see in here that this thing will actually go down and it'll, it'll actually say that you have moderate or poor. So as you add more stuff in here, this number should go down and we're gonna prove that to you. But stay tuned through the whole video because at the end of it, there's a formula that you can figure out by adding, you know, there's a way you can get to using those two numbers, you can tell exactly on a another chart exactly how well your, your internet is based off of the RSSI number and the noise level. There's another chart that puts this all together and stay tuned for that. That'll be coming later in the video, but it's the most important chart. All right, now we're going to do another test where I take the Mac Mini, I'm going to show you a picture, and I stand it up like this, you know, on its side there, and I'm going to keep the back of it, that's where the Wi-Fi signal is, I'm going to point that over towards the Wi-Fi, so it's kind of sitting up now. What, what do you think? Is that going to be better for Wi-Fi signal? People always ask me this. Well, let's, let's see if this proves it. Let's hold on one second. Here it is right here, so we have the screen open, and uh, we're going to come down here, so we can see in here that the RSSI went down to 59, all right? Now, the noise stayed the same, so the noise, we didn't introduce anything new in there, so the noise noise should be the same, but the RSSI, meaning that connection, went down to negative 59 before it was like negative 62 or 63. Is that better or worse? Let's pull up the chart. All right, we can see. So we, we were up at the 60s. We actually had an excellent connection before, but it went down to negative 59, and we can see that that's kind of even better, right? It's, it's more excellent. It's, it's going the right direction. So this actually worked. So it means it's actually a better connection between the router and there because by propping it up. And again, the noise didn't change because we introduced nothing else in the environment. But we can tell right away by propping it up, it does help with the signal. That's one proof right there. And you guys can test it yourself if you want to. You can do this with any Mac again. You can do it with, you know, you just move any Mac around, even laptops and stuff, you can use this testing for. Let's keep moving now. The next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna start introducing some stuff into this equation. Keeping in mind that at the end of this, I'm gonna give you the last chart that puts us all together. All right, now actually what I did is I took this little SSD, I think it's this one right here, and I put it right on top of, a, let me just show you a picture of it over there. So I put it on top of the Mac Mini, I plugged it in. So now we're creating some noise, right? And now I laid it back down flat. So that's the way most people use it. So I'm gonna keep it like that. And we're gonna see if this affects anything. So we're gonna come back over here. And just like I mentioned before, the RSSI jumped up to negative 68. You can see that there, right? That went from the, you know, the negative 50 something, which was excellent to negative 68. So if you go over here and we look at what happened, let's just go into this chart in here. And we're gonna see, now we're actually in the good range here. Look at this. We went from 57 in the excellent down to good only. Just that one small drive did that to it. Look at that. So you know, obviously we don't want to get down here, but we're still in good. So I'm still kind of confident. But even the noise level over here, we showed the noise before. Um, you know, it's negative 87. It was negative 90 something before. Is that worse or better? Let's go back to that chart and we're going to see what that is here. Let me get in there really quickly. All right, here we go. So look at, we're actually down now into, you know, in here somewhere. So we went from excellent again to good. So that went down as well because it's introducing noise. You can see that little teeny change, you know, changed all these values and uh, it, it makes a difference, but let's just keep moving here. We're gonna do two more and then I'm gonna give you that really important chart at the end. Okay, next one I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna actually take this thing right here. This is a hub dock with an SSD in it. And I'm gonna put the Mac mini on top of here, but I'm gonna leave the two SSDs on it as well. And this has got an SSD in it as well. So we're gonna affect that it's gonna really affect the speeds and everything. But there's something weird happening here. If you notice this, this the Mac mini sits on top of this and there's gonna be a little gap down here. So it's not sitting directly in the desk. That's introducing some differences here, which is interesting because we don't know how it's gonna react. So, but we're adding more noise, right? So let's figure out what this is gonna do next. Okay, so let's look in here. This is really interesting. So the RSSI, we, you know, here it is, Mac Mini flat with two external SSDs plus the SSD stand in here. Look at it over here. So the RSSI went actually, it, it got better. Let me actually pull up that chart again. So it was like a negative 66 before. And if I look at it now, let me see if I can find the chart. There's so many charts here. It went back to 61. So we're back in the excellent range. Now, the reason for that is because remember, we're not, this is, we're not talking about noise here with the stand here. What it actually did is it picked it up off the desk, which allows the signal to get in there better. So this is doing two things at once. It's letting the signal in easier because it's now off the desk but it's introducing more noise, and that's the weird thing. So if you look at the noise level, this is down to the lowest so far. It's a negative 75 right now, because now we have three different things attached to it with all this noise going around. So if you look at the noise chart, and I, there's a lot of charts I gotta bring up, so sorry about this. 
we're way down in here, right? So poor, now we're in the poor range. And this all, you know, it's perfectly making sense now when you watch these numbers, when you introduce things, you can see these values go up and down and you can use these charts just accordingly. But you can put all this together because just like I just showed you, sometimes, you know, you get a better signal, but sometimes you get more interference and they can offset each other. So how do you put all this together to know if your Wi-Fi is like perfect or not? Well, you use another chart using these two numbers and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so this is the last chart I'm gonna show you, I promise you, but this is the one that makes the most sense, or at least it has the most value. So this is called the SNR guidelines, all right? Signal to noise ratio. So with the SNR, the Wi-Fi radio signals may be reaching just fine, but there are other radio signals that make it hard to pick out. This background interference reduces signal clarity and, and affects Wi-Fi optimization. Devices like microwaves, cordless phones, and other net networks can cause interference. So, you know, but what does this chart mean? Now we have these other numbers here. You can see excellent, very good. Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put the other numbers together. Let me just show you what I mean here. All right, so in order to get that value for that last chart I just showed you, here's the baseline again. All you have to do, there's some math behind this, but it's the easiest thing is just to take the difference between both of these numbers. So a 92 and a 63. So 63 is 73, 83, 90, that's 29, there's 29 um, you know, difference between the two numbers. So find the difference between both numbers. I know they're negative numbers, you, you, can, you have to do some special math, but it's really just take the difference between both. If you look at 92 and 63, the difference is 29, right? So that's the number we wanna go with. So if we have 29 for that, let's go back to that chart that we were just looking at, and we're gonna see what this actually means. All right, so 29 in here, Looks, look at this. The difference was 29, so I'm falling in the very good signal. And that's kind of the, the ultimate thing. You use both of those values, and you, you find out the difference between them, and then you find out where you are. Very good signal here. And I have a 29, and you can see it's actually pretty good. You know, the higher, the better here. So I'm not up to really excellent, even close to it, but I'm not even close to low signal. So I, you know, that's acceptable to me, even with all those, you know, well, that's actually just the base. Hold on with that stuff there. But let's find out with all those things connected, you know, is it, you know, where do we fall in this chart? Okay, so here's the chart with everything connected. Remember at that time we have the, the SSD stand, the two external SSDs. Look at the difference here. The difference is a lot closer. So if we take the difference between these two numbers, it's only 14. Look at that. So it's 61 and 75. There's only a 14 number difference between the two. So let's go back to the chart that we were just talking about. And we're going to see what the 14, where that actually puts us, because that's not actually going to be good. So look at this. Now we're down to very low signal down here now because of the fact that now, you know, we actually went up a little bit in one thing, we went down in the other, but we have a lot of noise going on here. So we have more of a low signal now because we have all those things connected. And we look at this chart and we're like, geez, I want to try to bring that up. So, you know, obviously the more things you introduce in here, like I said, I had all three of them. I had them sitting on top of them, underneath it. So it caused a lot of interference there. But just by doing that, if you have things around there, even if even if they're a couple inches away, you're going to cause interference and you can use these charts. Okay, so just to wrap everything up, the first number is the RSSI number. If you look at the chart over here, obviously anything like lower than negative 65 is going to be excellent, but if you need to get up to negative 95, it's going to be disconnected. You can pause this and use that chart there. Then you're going to take the noise level and here's the chart for that. So what you want to do is obviously have negative 90 to negative 100 and it goes, so it's kind of the opposite direction, but you take your noise level based off your statistics and you can see where you fall here. And again, this is things that you're adding to it, like hubs and everything else like that. So you can kind of take things away, put them in there in real time, look at that number, see how it changes. You have to give it a few seconds. Sometimes it takes like 30 seconds to change the number. Just remember that it doesn't change instantaneous on the Mac there, but look at that number and then you can take things away and see if that's actually what's causing the interference. So you can see what's causing it in real time. And then finally, you basically take the difference of those numbers that you get, both of those numbers, just take the difference of them. Don't worry about the minus sign, just you know, see what the difference between both numbers is. And you look in here, and this is gonna give you kind of your overall rating here. And you really wanna be somewhere in here if you can. So when those numbers, and you know, the difference in numbers, if they're, as long as they're like around 25 to 40, you know, separated between the two, then you're actually gonna have a very good signal. I mean, I think even this low signal, I would call this medium, I wouldn't really call this low, I would call this maybe low and this is very low. So, I mean, you, you, you might be okay in here as well. I mean, I've used it in here many times, but this is the last chart that puts those two numbers together. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up, but this is just scratching the surface. I didn't get into like all the technical details and I didn't use the correct terminology and the numbers or how you you know subtract things and stuff. It doesn't really matter. I mean, just gave you the basics there. Charts can be a little bit different. You can go search for your own charts, but this is how you use this tool. And I use it all the time because like I said, I introduce things into my environment. I wanna see if there's a big drop there. If I, there's a huge drop, like sometimes I put a speaker next to it, it's got a huge magnet in it. 
cause a ton of problems. And I know right away, hey, you know, as I move this in and out, of course, give it a couple seconds to transmit over to the Mac, but you can see, hey, there's a problem or there's gonna be a problem here. So this is what I like to do. I hope I taught somebody something today. It's a lot of stuff to go through. I probably didn't do the best job of it, but I hope I gave you guys at least a little bit of knowledge there. And uh, anyways, we'll talk to you in the next one. I hope these things help people. Like I said, that's my sole purpose here. And we'll talk to you hopefully in two days. Peace.